Hello, today is day five of our Write It series for Black History Month. And today's video is going to be a bit different because of the images that I found online. It all started with me finding one of these pictures, the first one, and I ended up finding the rest through Pinterest. One of the first pictures I found was of Mimi Bradley, which is the last picture, the picture all the way to the right. And then after her, I found her mugshot, I found the rest of these ladies' mugshots. So we have mugshots for Annie Green, Mimi Bradley, Dolly Mickey, and Gertrude Smith. The first one we're going to talk about is Annie Green. She um, is described as being an old-time Negro pocket, pickpocket. Her victims were all white men, and the police never could get anyone to persecute her, as it would not admit to, ha to having anything to do with, uh, you know what. Um, she is called an old-time Negro pickpocket because she was known for that. that was, that's what she was known for. She did it a lot. And so it's very interesting to find mugshots from this time period, the early 1900s. The next picture, the next mugshot is of Dolly Mickey, one of the old Barberry Coast Negro pickpockets. They, that exact phrase is used again, old Negro pickpockets. So she's done it a lot. She would not stop at murder to get her victims money. After a number of arrests, she was finally sent to the county jail for six months in March 1906. She left town. And what's interesting, interesting about her leaving town in March of 1906 is that she just missed because these these mugshots are from San Francisco she just missed um, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake which occurred on April 18th so any film that was going to kind of reference her mugshot would have to would have an extra layer of ex excitement because of the following San Francisco earthquake um, so there's a mugshot that can be coupled with Dolly's mugshot, and this mugshot is of Gertrude Smith. She's another Negro pickpocket. She always worked with Dolly Mickey around the coast. She was also given six months in the county jail with Dolly, and when Dolly left town, she went with her. So if you look, if you, I'm going to go back. If you look at Dolly's um, mugshot number, her number is 18155, and Gertrude's is 18156 so they got arrested at the same time they obviously were partners in crime uh i've never seen a period film about black women going and getting involved in criminal type shenanigans um i think it would be very um a very different film to see so we have another mugshot and this one comes with um additional layers this one is of minnie bradley and her story is interesting because um, we got to see the whole mugshot. In addition to her photo, we also got to see her um, stats. So she was 27. She was 5'2 and 1 fourth. She weighed 134 pounds. Her complexion is described as dark brown. Her hair is described as black and kinky. Um, and also it mentions that she wears a wig. Her, sto her story came with additional information about what happened. So this is just a portion of it. I have all of the mug shots and all of these women's information and stories linked down below as always in the description box. So with Minnie Bradley, I'm gonna just read a portion. It says, she was arrested on the evening of December 11th, 1902. Someone from the Midway Saloon, and we'll get into the Midway Saloon a little bit more um, later on, a well-known dance hall and whorehouse owned by several notorious Omaha crime bosses offered to pay her $25 bond. Before she was released, W.H. Breder showed up at the police station and identified Minnie as the person who had robbed him earlier that evening. Minnie offered him five dollars to drop the charge but he refused so she spent the night in jail in the description it says that she someone from the midway saloon a well-known dance hall and whorehouse owned by several notorious omaha crime bosses offered to pay her 25 dollars bond so we have more on the midway the midway was known nationwide and apparently catered 
mostly to African Americans. They served alcohol and gambling of all sorts. At one point, there was a sign in the Midway that said, if you have a family that needs your money, don't gamble here. So it was a notorious place, the Midway Saloon. And um, one of the first owners was Vic Walker. And to the left, you'll see a picture of a home he bought. Um, I could not find any pictures of the man himself. He was known as the king of the colored underworld and also as, as the king of the Midway. He um, was the operator from 1898 to 1902. The second... Um, crime boss that I can find in connection with the Midway was Billy Crutchfield um, and he ran the Midway Saloon from 1903 to 1914. So the person that bailed out Minnie Bradley, she was arrested in 1902 so it, ha it could have been Vic Walker, um, Victor B. Walker. Interestingly enough, both of these crime bosses um, were African American and you don't, a lot of times you don't think of crime bosses in the Edwardian era being um, black Americans, but there were, and they both started out as police officers and became corrupt, and this is how they um, led their life into being pretty well-known crime bosses in the colored underworld, as it was called at the time. So a film that shows these women, it just starts off with these women and then leads into the wider, more layered underworld, uh, would be very interesting. So that kind of brings in the question, is there a space and an audience for black criminality in period films? Um, people are very concerned with representation and rightfully so because images and films play a large role in how people perceive those that they meet on an everyday basis. But I also believe that diversity in character is important. Um, when thinking about the possibility of having a film about these ladies in San Francisco and Omaha, it made me think of this quote that Viola Davis said. The entire article with her interview is linked down below as, as well. She said um, to The Hollywood Reporter that her favorite role was a role she played in Law and Order Criminal Intent when she played a serial killer. And she killed an entire family. And it was a lot of... Um, kind of controversy around that because people didn't like that they feel like it was bad representation of black women um, but that was one of her favorite roles uh, another one of her favorite roles is when she played miss miller in doubt and you see the picture here um she said a lot of people didn't like that character they didn't embrace her because uh, there's this idea that when you're playing a black character when a black character is on screen they, ha they represent the entire race so they can't be shown doing criminal things or being um, less than perfect and, and nice. So she says, it was a character that not a lot of black people embraced because they didn't like her. I think women face that in general, a lot more than men, but black women really face it. We are always overly sanctified in films, overly nurturing, overly sympathetic. To find that place where you're messy, it's difficult. Sometimes someone's junk is someone else's treasure. That was my treasure. So she refers to this role as her treasure because she got to play a character that she would not have usually gotten to play. So for now, I just want to talk about these mug shots and what type of film that could lead into. Uh, uh, the Edwardian era lasted from 1901 to 1910. That would be the perfect era to tell this story. The fashions would be awesome. And I want to see these ladies in action whether we show Annie Green by herself or whether we show the tag team of Dolly Mickey and Gertrude Smith or whether we show Mimi Bradley and her relationship with the crime bosses of Omaha who bailed her out, who tried to bail her out of jail. Whoever we show, we have to admit that these ladies existed. These mugshots are real and um, they would provide us with some interesting movies. I think someone should go out and write it.